the 23 member band for the ship's company band started their national anthem. Nevada was anchored directly astern of the Arizona. Moments later, as planes dropped the bombs on the flagship, they took the opportunity to strafe Nevada's decks as they continued down Battleship Road. The band played on, understandably a little faster. They kept playing until the song was finished, and then they dropped their instruments and they ran for cover in their battle stations. The band aboard Arizona, Navy Band Unit 22, had also assembled, but they never got to play. Instead, they rushed to their battle station, Singular. They were all assigned to pass ammunition for the magazine to the main gun, turret number one, on the main deck. Navy Band Unit 22 was assembled at the U.S. Naval School of Music in Washington, D.C. earlier that year in January. After training, they reported aboard Arizona in June in Hawaii. And part of the recreation programs at Pearl at that point in time was the Battle of the Bands. Everybody really got into that. Arizona's band very quickly established themselves as one of the best in the Pacific Fleet. They won their first competition that September, and then they earned their slot in the first semifinal competition in November, along with the band, you'll enjoy this, from the Marine Barracks Pearl Harbor. Hoorah. On December 6th, they attended the second semifinal performance to scope out their competition as all young men competing do. The winners that night were the bands from USS Pennsylvania, another battleship, and USS Tennessee, also another battleship. The finals were scheduled to take place two weeks later. That performance, of course, never took place. When the Pearl Harbor attack took place, an aerial bomb penetrated Arizona's decks, going deep into the ship where it exploded, setting off the stores in the forward magazine where Navy Band 22 was passing ammunition. They were all lost. Band Unit 22 was the only musical organization, or I should say is the only musical organization in the U.S. Navy to have been formed together, trained together, transferred together, competed together, fought together, and died together in their unit's entirety. Nobody transferred in and out during that, during that time period. The members of that unit are F.W. Kenny, Bandmaster, A.J. Nadel, W.L. Handy, O.N. Brabson, N.F. Radford, J.L. Scruggs, E.H. Whitson, C.J. Haas, F.N. Fluge, and I apologize, I'm probably mangling that name, C.C. Box, C.W. White, W.S. Morehouse, C.R. Williams, R.W. Burdett, R.K. Shaw, B.T. Hughes, W.M. McCary, J.H. Sanderson, W.R. Hurley, H.G. Chernuka, and I.E. Lynch. Later in 1942, Fleet Recreation Services polled the surviving members of the other bands still stationed in Hawaii and asked them to vote which band should receive first place in that aborted competition. Arizona's band won, not because of their fate, but because according to the other musicians polled, they were the best. Their trophy resides today at the USS Arizona Memorial Museum overlooking their final resting place. This time, the Marine Forces Reserve Band from New Orleans will play the Air Force Hymn and the Navy Hymn.
this time I'd like to ask ship's technician Nathan Bergeron to please join me at the boat. Following individuals are those hailing from Louisiana who were killed at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii and the surrounding airfields on December 7, 1941. From the USS Arizona BB-39, Esten Arledge, Signalman, Second Class, U.S. Navy. Achilles Arno, Fireman, Third Class, U.S. Navy. Claude Duran Arnold, Jr., Fireman, Third Class, U.S. Navy. Wilbur James Ashmore, Seaman, Second Class, U.S. Navy. Miller Xavier Adele, Water Tender, Second Class, U.S. Navy. Malcolm Clark, Baker, 3rd Class, U.S. Navy. John Quitman Davis, Seaman, 1st Class, U.S. Navy. Louis Felix Ducrest, Seaman, 1st Class, U.S. Navy. Russell Durio, Private, 1st Class, U.S. Marine Corps. David Delton Evans, Private, U.S. Marine Corps. Charles Donald Frederick, electrician's mate, second class, U.S. Navy. Lawrence J. Griffin, private first class, U.S. Marine Corps. Ivan Joseph Huval, seaman first class, U.S. Navy. Leslie Creed Hux, private first class, U.S. Marine Corps. Thomas Raymond Jones, ensign, U.S. Navy Reserve. Joseph McNeil Legros, Seaman First Class, U.S. Navy. Jesse Huell Murphy, Seaman First Class, U.S. Navy. J.D. Naylor, Signalman Second Class, U.S. Navy. Robert Leo Pritchett, Jr., Seaman First Class, U.S. Navy. Wilburn Carl Roberts, Baker Third Class, U.S. Navy. Walter Samuel Savage, Jr., Ensign, U.S. Navy Reserve. William Edison Stoddard, Seaman, First Class, U.S. Navy. Raymond Emery Tyson, Fire Controlman, Third Class, U.S. Navy. John William Whitaker, Jr., Seaman, First Class, U.S. Navy. Adrian Delton Williams, Seaman, First Class, U.S. Navy. Robert Kenneth Willis, Jr., Seaman, First Class, U.S. Navy. From USS Oklahoma, BB-37, Ralph M. Boudreau, Mess Attendant, First Class, U.S. Navy. Cyril I. Doucette, Mess Attendant, First Class, U.S. Navy. Charles H. Harris, Electrician's Mate, Third Class, U.S. Navy. Charles C. Gomez, Sr., Seaman, Second Class, U.S. Navy. Robert L. Pribble, Fire Controlman, Third Class, U.S. Navy. Houston Temples, Seaman, First Class, U.S. Navy. Clarence Thompson, Ship's Cook, First Class, U.S. Navy. Richard L. Watson, Seaman, First Class, U.S. Navy. From USS California, BB-44, John A. Blunt, Jr., Private First Class, U.S. Marine Corps. Lloyd H. Couture, Seaman Second Class, U.S. Navy. Alfred J. Farley, Seaman Second Class, U.S. Navy. Roy E. Lee, Jr., Private, U.S. Marine Corps. Lloyd G. Smith, Seaman Second Class, U.S. Navy. The battleship USS West Virginia BB-48, William C. Jackson, electrician's mate, third class, U.S. Navy. From the retired battleship USS Utah, AG-16, Joseph U. Connor, fireman, first class, U.S. Navy. Harold A. Harvison, lieutenant, junior grade, U.S. Navy. From the light cruiser USS Helena, CL-50, 
Marvin W. Mayo, Fire Controlman, Second Class, U.S. Navy. From the seaplane tender, USS Curtis, AV-4, George H. Guy, Seaman, Second Class, U.S. Navy. On Ford Island at Kanoe Naval Air Station from, from Patrol Squadron 11, Rodney S. Foss, Ensign, U.S. Navy. At Hickam Field with the U.S. Army Air Corps 23rd Bombardment Squadron, William Hislop, Private First Class, U.S. Army Air Corps. And Commanding Battleship Division 1 from his flagship, USS Arizona BB-39, Rear Admiral Isaac Campbell Kidd, Sr., U.S. Navy, native of Behind. shipmates and comrades in arms lost among the 2,400 Americans killed that day. Bugler, please sound taps. Franklin Delano Roosevelt, on December 8th, 1941, talked about December 7th, a date which will live in infamy. He continued on, no matter how long it may take us to overcome this premeditated invasion, the American people in their righteous might will win through, will win through to absolute victory. Now hear these words of benediction. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. May his countenance shine upon you. Go forth on this day, honoring the memory of those who have given so much for our freedom. Go forth to serve your God and your community. May you each be blessed with a fair wind and a following sea. Amen.
1941, hardly anyone in Baton Rouge knew where Pearl Harbor was. Very few people in the United States today can say the same. 365 days ago, hardly anyone in Baton Rouge had ever heard of Wuhan, China, or something called the coronavirus. Pearl Harbor changed the world just like coronavirus has. But Pearl Harbor teaches us something very important today and every day. The band played on. This is not the observance we envisioned a year ago. But the band is here, and the music continues, and it will continue to play on, as will the memories of Isaac Kidd, Navy Band 22, and all those who have come before us. I want to thank you for coming today and for tuning in today. In 10 minutes, we'll reconvene on shore for the USCGC White Alder Memorial Observance.